everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to go over the top 20 vintage or vintage inspired Christmas items that are selling this year in the shop. Every year, original Christmas ephemera is becoming more and more difficult to find, but there are a few modern companies that print very similar to the original ephemera. And I actually have an awesome vendor in our shop who finds these classic prints and remasters them with color and prints them for sale. Occasionally we still do get really great pieces of ephemera like that adorable greeting card. And it's hard to say what that was, but it was mod podged onto a piece of wood to hang. But any ephemera is very collectible but especially holiday ephemera. Originally, bottle brush trees made an appearance in the 1930s, but throughout the past almost 100 years, they really have stood tall. They come in so many different colors and sizes now. Some you can get with glitter, some are flocked with fake snow. But the best part about bottle brush trees are you can stick them in any type of vessel to change up their look. These were actually put in cut down spindles and it gave it such a classic look. We could actually use those bottle brush trees in number three, domes, cloches, and terrariums. A lot of people make little scenes out of these items and they're adorable. As you can see here, this is a terrarium. It's open on the top, as is this one. And really, it's letting your creativity run wild. You can put little bottle brush trees or pine cones. This one just has three little bottle brush trees and fake snow. And cloches and domes, this would be considered a cloche where the top is closed, but that's actually just a vintage cheese platter. That one is adorable. I love those trees. Classic Santa first made an appearance in the 1930s. Prior to that, Santa was seen as either an elf or even like a tall, skinny type of spirit image. But in the 1930s through the 1950s, we, they really started to solidify what the Santa that we know today was. He was a jolly, chubby man with a red coat and any items involving him sell out in our shop. molds started in the 1940s but were different and two-dimensional, uh, which is not what we know of glow molds today. In fact, it wasn't until the classic pink flamingo was made by Union Products Plastic Company in the late 1950s that the molds we know and love today started to be manufactured. Some serious collectors of glow molds in fact, it's becoming more and more difficult to find reasonably priced glow molds at auction or once in a while you'll find one on Facebook Marketplace, but usually the prices are upwards into almost $100, over $100, especially for the more rare ones. Ceramic trees have probably been on everybody's top 20 list for a few years now but it's becoming more of a very specific brand and company, not the hobby pieces that people did in ceramic classes. They're looking for very specific brands and types. There's still a great piece to have, maybe in a bay window or up on a mantle. The lights are actually a little bit more difficult to find, originals, because a lot of them did fall out or broke over time, got lost in boxes, but they're still a beautiful piece to add to a collection. Scrap fabric trees were very popular in the 1970s. Probably a lot of people just made them as a hobby piece, learning to sew, something to do, but 
they are adorable. This one is actually true fabric scrap, probably little pieces left over, but it made itself into an awesome little tree. By the time that I filmed this, almost all of our advent calendars had sold in the stores, so this is just an example of one. They're still popular, people love them, but they are becoming more and more difficult to find. Vintage sleds have probably been on a top 20 list for quite a while as well. In my opinion, vintage sleds are one of the best decor pieces during Christmas. Unfortunately, all the ones in my shop um, that I'm showing are on the floor or laying flat, but to take a vintage sled and prop it up against the fireplace or on the front porch with a, with a wreath, it's just one of my favorite holiday decor pieces. These wreaths are a lot of fun. They're great to even give as gifts, but the best part about pom-pom wreaths are you can make them yourself and you don't have to just limit them for Christmas. A pom-pom wreath in the right color with maybe pine cones in it or if you can find some plastic snowflakes can be up through the rest of the holidays, January into February. Like this pink one, you don't have to limit it it just for Christmas. You could use it until February. It always amazes me how much people love the classic glass ball ornament. With all the ornaments that they make, I would say hands down the glass ball ornament is still the best seller. I guess it's just because the ornament can be used in so many different ways, not just hanging on the tree. I've seen people put them in different types of glass vessels where you know you can look through and see all the different colored balls. And people really do look for specific types. There's concaved ones where there's an insert in the glass ball. Some of them are hand painted. There's just so many varieties of these, and again, it's just the number one seller for all types of Christmas ornaments. I'm sure many of us have that nostalgic feeling when you see these glasses because I'm pretty sure most families have had these exact glasses on their dining room table or up in the pantry for the holidays. These weren't the best examples of the plaid boxes I was speaking about because most of them did sell for the holiday season but I think a lot of people were buying them to use as um, like tree bases, like tree stands uh, for a lot of the fake trees that we were selling in the shop. These Santas are usually used in primitive home decor. A lot of them have large cloaks on that have fur trim. They are not the typical happy jolly Santas, they're usually more stern, but they're very collectible and people love them. So I combined number 15 and 16 regarding the natural trees and garland greens. I think people forget that not that long ago, you couldn't just go down to Walmart or Target or Lowe's and buy a tree in a box or pick up your greens that you wanted to decorate your mantles with. And I definitely have seen over the last few years a strong comeback of using real greens. Even if some of the greens are still fake, I just love that they look so realistic with the pine cones still attached and it's just a fantastic look and it really brings that great nature look into your home.
I absolutely love this garland and it's something that you can use past the holidays and how this vendor intertwined it between the red wearer and the crocs it's just a fantastic look and to continue with the nature look pine cones were a huge seller this year people use them as tree ornaments but also just laying in bowls and it didn't matter if they looked natural or not. There were some that were selling that were sparkly, some had glitter, some were shiny. And believe it or not, we had vendors in our shop selling real pine cones and every day they sold. I'd imagine that they were using them for crafting or even if they put them in a large dough bowl with a candle in the center. It's a great look. I think tiny homes like these have always been a big seller during the holidays. Not just ornaments, but even when people have little villages that they set up under the tree, these are perfect. Obviously this time of year, blankets and quilts do sell but there definitely was an increased interest in Christmas quilts. And we had this one here in the store. It was handmade. I'm sure the person that made it found the pattern somewhere or bought the material and just put it together, but it was super cute. And blankets that had the red and green clad Christmas colors, um, especially this wool one. They definitely were selling more than I had expected them to. And last but not least, my favorite, elves. I think elves are my favorite because I absolutely love gnomes. I collect them and what's second best to gnomes but elves? This little guy I'm assuming is an elf because I can't imagine Santa having time to do downhill skiing with symbols in hand. So cute though, and he's vintage, he was made in Japan. And this came home with me because I absolutely loved it. So cute. Thank you guys so much. I hope you all have a happy holiday. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel.